A window is in the form of a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle. The rectangle is of clear glass, whereas the semicircle is of tinted glass that transmits only half as much light per unit area as clear glass does. The total perimeter is fixed. Find the proportions of the window that will admit the most light. As always, the first thing we want to do is draw a picture to represent the situation. In this case, we have a rectangle, and on top of the rectangle is a semicircle, surmounted. This is about the only use of the word of surmounted in the entire English language. We can let P be the perimeter of the entire window. P is a constant. If working with P bothers you, pick a number, like 1 or 10, and substitute that in for P but I'm going to use it in general as a constant P. Let R be the radius of the semicircle. That means that the width of our rectangle is 2R. Let L be the height of the rectangle. There you go. <clears throat> so what are the things we know? The perimeter is fixed, and to compute the perimeter, you will take half the circumference of the circle. Well, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, so half the circumference will be pi r. The length is counted twice, and the width, which is twice the radius, is counted once. So the perimeter is pi r plus 2l plus 2r. The goal of the problem is to maximize the light that travels through the window. Let's call that L. And L is going to be proportional to the area of the rectangle plus half the area of the semicircle. And the half, of course, is because only 50% of the light is transmitted through the opaque glass. Now, there's a constant of proportionality here, and it's not going to make a difference in terms of the solution, so let's just assume that constant of proportionality is 1, which means we can actually make that our function L will be the area of the rectangle plus half the area of the semicircle. In terms of R and L, this tells us L is going to be 2 R times L plus half the area of the circle is one half pi R squared. So we will take half of that half to give us a total of one quarter pi R squared. We have two variables involved here, L and R. It looks like it's going to be easiest to substitute out for L and have our light function entirely in terms of the radius r. So solving the perimeter constraint for L gives us that uh, L is going to be the perimeter minus pi r minus 2r all divided by 2. This can be substituted into our light function giving a function entirely in terms of the variable r, which we can now try to maximize by taking the derivative with respect to r. Probably should do a little bit of simplification first. Substituting our computed function for L, oh. substituting our computed function for L into the formula for light gives us 2R times the quantity P minus pi R minus 2R all divided by 2 plus 1 quarter pi R squared 
Before going ahead and optimizing this function, let's do some algebraic simplification. Uh, specifically, uh, there's a common factor of 2 that can be divided out. You can distribute the r to give you pr minus pi r squared minus 2 r squared plus 1 quarter pi r squared. Adding together the like terms involving pi r squared finally gives us that the light function is p times r minus 3 quarters pi r squared minus 2 r squared. Now we have a function L in terms of a single variable r. Remember, p is constant. We can take the derivative with respect to r to find our critical point. But uh, <clears throat> this gives us our function describing the light through the window in terms of the variable r. Now we need to determine the interval on which r is varying. Certainly, r can be no smaller than 0, but to compute how large r can get, sort of think of the extreme where the entire window is made up of the semicircle. In that case, the total perimeter is going to be 2r plus pi r, solving for r we see that the greatest r can be is p divided by 2 plus pi. So the interval in which we're trying to maximize the function is r varying between 0 and the perimeter divided by 2 plus pi. Let's take the derivative of L with respect to r to find our critical points. The derivative of p times r is just going to be p, because p is a constant. The derivative of negative 3 fourths pi r squared will give us negative 3 halves pi r. And the derivative of negative 2 pi r squared gives us negative 4 r. Set the derivative equal to 0 to solve for the critical points. This will give us p equal to 3 pi over 2 plus 4, all times r. <clears throat> Dividing both sides by the coefficient of r, we will see that r equals p divided by the quantity 3 pi plus 8 divided by 2. And we can make simplify the compound fraction by multiplying by its reciprocal to finally give us that r is 2p divided by 3 pi plus 8. At this point is normally where we test the endpoints and the critical points to make sure what we're looking at is a maximum. But instead, uh, let's consider the information given to us by the second derivative. The second derivative, or the derivative of L prime in this case, is straightforward p is a constant, so it gives us 0. Negative 3 halves pi r, when we take the derivative with respect to r, gives us its constant, negative 3 halves pi. And negative 4r gives us minus 4. So the second derivative in this case is negative 3 pi over 2 minus 4. This in itself is a constant, and it's always negative. That means our function is always concave down. So the single critical point we found has to correspond to a maximum. <clears throat> since, <clears throat> since the second derivative is always negative, it happens to be constant, our function is concave down, and that makes the single critical point that we found our global maximum. To answer the question, we want to write down a final conclusion, namely, the window of specified parameter p uh, results in maximum light 
when the radius of the semicircle is 2p divided by 3 pi plus 8, and the rectangle below it has dimensions 4p divided by 3 pi plus 8 by 1 half of p minus pi plus 2 times 2p divided by 3 pi plus 8.